Hey, what's up you guys? So today I want to discuss Tower of Song by Sarah J Moss. So this is the sixth book in the Throne of Glass series. I've got book talks up for the rest of the series. I have so far really enjoyed this series. I love the characters. I love the setting. I highly recommend checking this series out if you haven't. So as far as Tower of Dawn is concerned, this book is probably my least favorite one in the series up to this point because I don't like Cole. And I think that the characters in this book were a little underdeveloped. I didn't like them as much. I didn't think that I got as much from them as I do from my characters in the rest of the books. I mean, it kind of makes sense because we were only introduced to them in this book. But at the same time, Sarah J Moss, I know in her other books, she was able to introduce a character in the book and make me feel like they were kind of fully fleshed out. I just didn't get that in this book, especially in regards to Nesrin, who we've already been introduced to. So the fact that she didn't get as much of an arc as I was hoping for kind of disappointed me. I liked how this book further developed the world. I love seeing another continent of the world and I love seeing how that plays into what's going on in Terrison and Otterland right now because it shows how interconnected every part of this world is even though they have kind of all closed off and been on their own. I definitely liked some of the plot twists that we got in this book. I think that one in particular really shocked me and I was like ooh buddy. This book also is probably the one that I have like the most mixed feelings on because as I said I didn't like the character arcs but there were some strong character moments. Like when Irene and Cole first met I was just laughing my ass off. So it's one of those things where there were great moments. It's just they didn't fit into as much of a great story. So that's kind of my thoughts as far as that is concerned. I did like some of the new characters that we got, specifically Irene. I thought that she was well done. I just don't feel like all of the new characters were well done. This story did take me a second to get into in comparison with the other ones because we were in like a completely different place and we were really just centered on Cole. And so we had no clue what was really going on with the rest of our people. I mean, we did because what happened with them was Empire of Storms, but we didn't get that tie into them. I also feel like the climax at the end, it was kind of mistimed, specifically in regards to what happened with Nesserin and Cole. I feel like it would have been better if those two events that were kind of climactic for both of them had been timed simultaneously, but I do understand why that couldn't happen given the story, but I just didn't like how it felt like one story ended and then we finished another story rather than one whole story ending at once, if you know what I mean. So that's my general thoughts on this book. If you would like to discuss this book more with me in the spoilery section, please feel free to stick around. But if you haven't read it yet, I am about to spoil you. So let's just get into it. Let's kick this off with the beginning of this book. Cole and Nesserin are in the new southern continent. We get so much more of this world. We get introduced to an empire that honestly seems a lot better than the rest of the places that we've been to so far. But I really did love this empire structure as far as how, you know, the next person inherited the throne. I did think that it was interesting how they killed off all of the potential heirs. That's just cruel, it feels like, killing children. People in this book just love to kill people, man. Cole in this book, he is suffering from his injury. And so he and Nesserin go meet the Kagan. I'm sorry if I mispronounce words, but they go and meet the Kagan. He's in mourning because one of his children has recently died. And so they can't really meet with him. And so they're kind of just stuck. And as far as Nesserin is concerned in this initial bit of the book, I was so annoyed that we got nothing from her. She went to meet her family and that was literally it. She met her family and then she just met with them for days after days after days. And we got no development from her. She did nothing. Like, what is the point of having her in the story if you're not even gonna use her for anything? That was so frustrating to me. Like, develop her, do something with her, make her a part of the story. She just wasn't. She was just off doing her own thing. And so Cole, while this is going on, he's working with Irene to try to heal his spinal injury so that he can walk again. And their initial conversation, I thought was really funny. I just loved how irritated she was and how irritated he was. Was, and I love that little banter between the two of them. So they were both really irritated with each other in the beginning. I loved that and I got kind of curious about Irene. So I googled her because I wanted to figure out like one little detail and then I saw her last name on Google and I was so pissed. I was like, damn it. Of course I spoiled myself for that one because I read and Cole get together by the end of the book and I didn't see that coming. So again, with honestly, I didn't see him leaving Nesserin, but it's fine. I can just spoil myself and cry. So Irene is really upset with Cole because Irene hails from Fen Hollow and her mom was killed by the King's Men and she doesn't like anyone from Otterland with good reason. She's 
working with him to heal him. She's not really in it, but as she works with him and heals him more, she starts to get more of an understanding for him and she starts to kind of forgive him a little bit. I think that really helps her develop and that's why I said that I liked her so much in the beginning because she she actually developed, she changed in some ways. I don't feel like a lot of the other characters did that. I think Cole did a little bit because he was forced to, but I don't think he did it enough and he still was annoying. <laughs> so I don't really care about him. He's being healed. Nesserin. So she's working with Sartak to try and hunt a potential Valg who killed someone in the tour, which is the healing center, which is where Irene works. This thing was hunting Irene and naturally this stresses everyone out. And so Sartak and Nesserin are trying to figure out what this is. And so they actually wind up going away together to try to see if she can actually sway some of his like eagle riders, they're called rooks, to try to sway some of those rooks to join the cause and come fight Erwin off in the north. She does that and I was really grateful for it because I was hoping we'd get some development with her, but we didn't. None at all. It's okay, whatever. She doesn't matter, right? She's just some character. And then Cole and Irene are still working on his injury, and she's trying to kind of figure out what it is that she can do to help him. She thinks that this is kind of tied to that Valg attack because this happened while she was trying to figure out how to heal him, and I thought that that was an interesting mystery. And then we figure out what it is, and apparently she can purge the Valg from people when they're infected. It. And so can any healer with that gift. And so that was a cool discovery. And I'm so excited for that discovery because maybe we won't have to kill so many people. We will still probably have to kill a bunch of people, but maybe not as many. And so while they're working on that, they also discover some, you know, information about the origins of where the Val came from. And I absolutely loved this development. I loved learning more about the history of this world. That was probably my favorite thing in this book was just learning the history of the world because so much of it was taught to this location, especially because as in comparison with Riftfold, they didn't have anyone who burnt a bunch of books back in the day. So they could actually find this information. Whereas the king back in Riftfold, he'd burnt a bunch of texts. Like they couldn't find information like this just as easily. And so that was really awesome was learning this information. And while this is going on, we're kind of building our bonds with the rest of the royal family. So there's Hassar, who is also underused. There is Kushin, also underused. There is is Duva not underused and there is Ad who win. He's he's kind of the one where I don't care as much because he wasn't really there to begin with. But I feel like Kashin and Hassar, because they were both more present in the story, that because nothing really happened with them, I was just disappointed. Especially in regards with Hassar, because Hassar was trying to get Irene to kind of spy on Cole for her, and Irene didn't want to do that, but Hassar kind of forced her to. I didn't like how that was just a one scene thing. I was like, if you're gonna use this, make it a bigger deal. So I was just frustrated with that. I didn't like how that didn't go anywhere. And the same thing kind of goes with Kashin and Irene. So they had had like a thing going on because Kashin was into Irene. Irene wasn't really into him. And I just felt like that also went nowhere. We didn't get any development with that. We just got an immediate closure at the end, which is just frustrating. So I wish we had further developed these characters better. I do like that we were introduced to them and that we, you know, learned more about this family, but I felt like they were very underused. Duva, on the other hand, she was very silent most of the time. She didn't have much of a presence, but that was kind of her whole role as being the found princess that she was. And so I thought that that was a good usage of her. It just didn't carry over with the rest of the siblings because they didn't get used as well. Now let's jump over to Nesserin and Sartak and what they're doing. So they're with the rook trying to get them to come over to Cole and Nesserin's side and help out with this war. And there's not a bunch of conflict there really. The only thing that's going on though is some of the rook babies are being taken by some giant spiders. So they are trying to rescue some of these little baby birds that will grow into giant eagles. So they're going to try and rescue them. When doing that, they fall into a spider's web because of course they would. It's a trap. It's always a trap. No one ever thinks it's a trap, but it is always a trap. They're now trapped. I was really scared for them in this moment. I genuinely thought we were going to have some good development. Sartak and Nesserin are trying to run away and escape while Kadara, which is Sartak's rook, is trying to fly away. So 
Sartak's rook is able to make her escape, but Sartak and Nesserin have to like make their way through this really narrow pass in order to even try to escape. So they're running and Sartak gets stuck. So Sartak has to essentially just say, Nesserin, you have to go on without me. And she doesn't want to, but she has to. And so that moment where he gave up, stopped trying to go forward, I just, I was so, so upset. I was like, oh no, not him. I'm starting to like him. And so I was just, I was so close to, to tears in that moment. But then Nesrin comes up with a solution to get them out of it. She fakes it like she's injured and gets taken by the spiders as well. So that way she can be in the same location as Sartak. What the spiders don't know when they captured them was that there was a shapeshifter with Nesrin. And so the shapeshifter comes out as a little mouse and starts biting away at their vines. He's able to bite away at their vines. And while this is going on, Nesrin is able to learn information from the spider about the origins of the Valg. And so what we learn is we learn that Maeve is actually a Valg queen. She was married to one of the Valg kings. And I was like, holy shit, like what? Like that makes so much sense. And the way that she was able to intertwine her life in with the rest of the Fae was super interesting. And I just loved learning more about Maeve. I thought that Maeve, we don't know that much about her, but now we do. Now she feels like an actual threat that's attached to the threat of Erwin. And so I liked that we now have this attachment for Maeve and Erwin. Now it just feels like it's really, really coming together. They discover that Maeve is a Val queen and that Erwin is actually here to search for her. He just doesn't know it. And so I'm super pumped to see how that's going to play into the next book. I'm so curious to see how their conflict is going to play in with the conflict of Maeve and Aelin and Aelin and Erwin. I'm just like, it feels like a triangle that's coming together really well. So I'm pumped for this triangle to come full circle and just do the geometry thing and become geometry. So in order to escape, the shapeshifter that they had with them transformed into one of the spiders and was able to lure the other spider away, which was awesome. I love seeing that development of that one character where he was actually able to help a little bit. He went from being like a meek merchant to being an actual assist in kind of battle situation. Again, I feel like he was underused as well though because he was just used in that one scene, especially because Sartak and him initially started off with a very rocky relationship. I just feel like that rocky relationship wasn't used. It was just established and not used. Like use the things that you establish. It's fine. I found this book very frustrating. They escape. They get the rope to decide to help out with the conflict up in the northern continent with or without the support of the Kagan, which is fantastic. They all fly to Antica, which is where Cole and Irene are at because Cole told Nesrin that he needed her there. And this was because of the things that he had discovered as far as he were concerned and as far as the history of the Fae and the Valg were concerned. He gets Nesrin back there, but right at that moment, Irene gets tricked into going down into one of the catacombs under the tour and she sees the head healer with a knife to her throat and essentially the choice is either she becomes a Valg or she's gonna kill the head healer. Now Cole is with her. Cole has kind of regained the ability to walk at this point. He is kind of back in action and so Cole tries to give Irene the chance to run by fighting Duva. I like this scene overall. Again, this was another scene that I liked in general but I didn't like it as far as the story was concerned because I think that it didn't do much. We figure out Duva is a Valg princess. She's the one that killed the healer the other time in the tour and she wants to stop Irene from spreading her knowledge that the Valg are just parasites and that they can treat them the way that they treat parasites. You know, this uh, this information is kind of important. Irene tries to run with the head healer and Cole tries to fight Duva and in this whole altercation, Duva is able to get knocked unconscious but Cole is injured again in his spine and he's like dying. And so all of the healers are able to come together and heal Cole, but it's at the cost of tying his life to Irene's. And on top of that, he's now supported by Irene's magic fully. And so he can't walk if she's drained her magic, essentially is what's gonna happen with that. I think that that was a cool development. I was gonna be really frustrated if he just healed up completely and was able to walk because I always find that kind of plot frustrating, such as in Glee when Quinn had her injury and then she was just able to walk later. I was like, what was the point of, of that injury? 
if it was supposed to be something life lasting, you know? Like, like what is what is the point of that injury if not to show the consequences of actions? So anyways, that's kind of how I felt about Cole's injury. I normally do just get frustrated if someone gets injured in a way that feels permanent and then it's not permanent in a story. So I like that there was some aspect of permanence to it, even if it wasn't complete permanence. And I also liked how the way in which Duval was knocked out was through training that Selena had given Irene. I loved how Irene was someone from the Assassin's Blade and I loved how we tied in those stories from the Assassin's Blade and how it really comes down to someone being nice to someone else. Like that's that's what's really important here. It's just being kind for kindness's sake. So I really love that message overall of just kindness and generosity and just looking out for your neighbor. I love that message. I'm so here for it. I just wish that it had been done better in this book. So this book was just kind of disappointing for me, but I am really looking forward to Kingdom of Ash. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe, comment, all that jazz. I'll see you in my next video. Bye!